welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're having a quick look at the uh, Simpson's Rule, the approximation technique uh, for finding areas under curves. So let's actually uh, draw up a function. Okay. Okay, here's our function. Uh, let's actually have a quick look at uh, some function values. A, obviously, its height over here is uh, f of A. It's the y axis. Okay, uh, let's go to B. Uh, somewhere here. Okay, B. Its height would be obviously f of B. And in the center, okay, which is uh, A plus B on 2, or the average of A and B. Its height obviously is function of a plus b over 2. Okay, they're the y values, they're the heights. Now, sometimes we actually uh, call this one y0, y1, and y2. Okay. I always start with 0. Uh, some textbooks start with y1, but I think this way it's quite good because the y2 tells you there's two strips. Okay. Okay, so let's actually have a quick look at what Simpson's rule says. Well, Simpson's rule says that if I want to integrate a function from a to b, fx dx, then it's approximately equal to, uh, now, always Simpson's h on 3. Now, it's the first and the last, so it's y0 plus y2 in this case, plus 4 times y, this is y1. Okay, this is the 4 times the odd one. Okay, so this is actually just one application. You can see, uh, to start with, uh, h, what is h? h is the width. Okay, you could work it out as b minus a on n, n being the number of strips, or sometimes uh, sub-intervals. Okay, now... Um, while we're on this, so you can see here, this is just one application. You can see there are actually two strips. So actually, the first thing is n has to be even for Simpsons. Okay. Now, where is h? Well, um, h is actually just, okay, it should be uniform, obviously, uh, like a uniform mesh. Each strip should have the same width, h. Now, what are we actually trying to find? Well, we, we're actually finding the area. Okay, I'll just quickly highlight this area for just give you an idea. So we are actually trying to find uh, the area under this curve here. Now, this is, as I said, an approximation technique, but surprisingly, it's actually quite exact for um, degree two and degree three polynomials. And what uh, Simpson's rule does is it fits. Uh, let's have a look. Oops. Uh, let's uh, go back and put. Uh, okay. So this point, this point, and this point. You might remember the actual trapezoidal rule just uh, joins up the intervals with straight lines. Okay. Um, Simpson's rule tries to fit a uh, parabola through it. I'll just try and fit a parabola through it. Okay. Um, and uh, it's, as I said, very accurate for degree 2 and degree 3. Let's just take that out again. Okay. So let's have a quick look at uh, this geogebra applet. This is actually... Oops, what happened there? Let's go back to... The, okay. Here's the GeoGebra applet, which I made a while ago. Uh, now you can see here uh, the blue graph is actually um, the uh, this, is, this is the one here. This is the uh, the function, and uh, you can see here the the red one. Okay, this is the uh, okay. This is the bit which uh, the Simpsons rule has tried to fit the tops of these uh, uh, function values three. So you can see here. Uh, it's fitting a uh, parabola through those three function values. Okay, the actual function itself, you can see, dips below and above, and in fact, uh, the shaded area is the actual uh, area. And you can see here, over here, the applet actually worked out what Simpson's rule and the uh, area were. And you can see here, for degree three, it was actually exact. Okay, we're going to go through an example now uh, to uh, show that. Okay, so. I need to go back. Okay, we're now going to apply Simpson's rule with one application and uh, have a quick look at uh, uh, y equals x cubed. So the example, okay, we want to find uh, from, say, 1 to 3 under x cubed dx. Okay, let's actually uh, 
draw a picture. I always like to draw a picture just to have a bit of an idea. Okay, here we come, the, the cubic curve. Now we want to go from 1 to 3. Okay, 1 to 3. Uh, we would obviously need the middle one as well at 2. So let's actually have a quick look at uh, the heights. These are the y values. Okay, and how do we find them? Well, we have a function, um, x cubed, so a uh, function of 1 is actually 1 cubed, function of 2 is 2 cubed, and function of 3, these are the heights, is 3 cubed. And you can see here, at 1 it's 1, at 2 it's uh, 2 cubed, 8, and at 27 at 3. So the heights would be, in fact, this case, uh, 1, 8, and 27. Okay. These, in fact, this is actually y, you can see this is y2, uh, this is y1, this is y0. So if you like, this is actually y0, y1, and y2. Uh, okay, so let's apply uh, the rule. And okay, the rule says it's h on 3, it's uh, y0 plus, in this case, y2 plus 4 lots of y1. Okay. Uh, now, this is only an approximation technique, so I'll just put approximate, but it actually turns out to be exact, you'll see shortly, for um, degree 2 and degree 3 polynomials. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Um, so we're trying to find this area under here. Okay, this area here. What is h? You can see here, h is this the width of each of these, so this is h. As you can see here, it's only one unit. Okay, so it's approximately equal to, you can see here, 1 on 3. Uh, now y0 was just 1 plus y2 was 27 plus 4 times 8. Okay, what's that? 4 times 8, 32 uh, and uh, 28. So that's about one third of 60, which is uh, approximately equal to 20 units squared. Now, okay, so let's try and do the exact value now. Uh, well, uh, now, the exact value uses a fundamental theorem, but uh, I'll just quickly, so we want to integrate from 1 to 3 of x cubed dx, and that's exactly equal to, and we're adding 1 to the power, dividing by the power, this is a, a 3, 1, so that's 3 to the 4, on 4, uh, minus 1 to the 4, 4, okay, so that's what, 81 on 4 minus uh, 1 on 4, uh, it's basically, uh, it's 80 on 4, which is 20, and you can see here, this is the exact value. So, it turned out to be exactly equal for uh, degree 3 polynomial. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.